Welcome back folks for a new episode of Elite where I report out information regarding to what's coming next for World of Tanks. Now the STA2 has been circulating the super test server. This is going to be a premium tier 8 Japanese medium tank released right after the T-54 model 1945. So we have that to look forward to. But I could not find that many pictures of the STA1 or STA2 since both tanks were prototypes in the development of the Type 61 main battle tank. So alright. But the STA-2 looks more like the Type 61 than the STA-1 because it has less road wheels and a lower engine deck. So the same hull armor as the Type 61. So as you can see here, this is a picture of the STA-1. Now it has one more road wheel, one more rotor back carry wheel if you call, whatever that thing is, <laughs> as the raised engine deck. Whereas on the Type 61 as well as the STA2, both tanks have 6 road wheels, 3 roller back wheels instead of 4, and a lower engine deck. So same playing hull armor. So quite alright. So here's a little history about the STA tanks as well as the development of the Type 61. So basically after World War II, Japan was le leasing a lot of Sherman tanks, but they were having trouble with the crew compartments because Japanese crew have smaller stature. So yeah, and the Sherman tank was obsolete against the likes of the T-3485 or even the T-54. So yeah. Also, they cannot really afford the M47 patent. So basically the Type 61 is a blueprint copy of the M47 patent with less armor and a 90mm gun according to Japanese armed forces standards. So different standards for different nations. Now in real life, the STA-2 is more like the original Type 61 than the Type 61 in the game because it never had the 105mm gun, it only had the 90mm gun. So the STA-2 is more like the real life Type 61, so alright. But as you can see here with the pictures, the STA-2 um, looks a lot like the Type 61, so basically they're pretty much the same thing. Also, these tanks look a lot like the M47 Patton because they were based off the M47 Patton with less armor. But, alright. So basically, the STA part of the designation is pretty much a prototype designation for the Type 61. Like how the STB1 is actually a prototype for the, T, uh, for the Type 74, I think. Is it Type 74? Yep. So here is the quote-unquote STB1. So basically it's a prototype to the Type 74. So alright, so pretty much interesting facts, but alright. So only on the Type 74 is the 105mm gun equipped, whereas on the Type 61, it only had the 90mm gun. So yeah, the gun in the game for the Type 61 is not that accurate. So it never had that 105mm, it only had the 90mm, but alright. And here are the in-game models for the STA-2. Now this tank looks a lot more like the Type 61 in the game. So alright, because of smaller hull armor as well as lower engine deck unlike the STA-1. So alright, so it's like playing the Type 61 stock at tier 8 instead of tier 9 with a 90mm gun. So pretty much it. So like its predecessor or successor, this tank has no armor none whatsoever. 45 millimeters at the front is crap. Ugh, probably dirty at the sides. Ugh. Crap. Turret armor is only 70. Crap. Capola is 70. Crap. Top of the Capola is or top of the turret is 45-ish. Eh, you might bounce a few shots but eh. Matlet is okay 126 millimeters but Against tier 9s and tier 10 guns, yeah, it is meh, no, none, no armor whatsoever. So like the Japanese tanks, it has no armor, ugh, but alright. Here is the first iteration test stats. Now they buffed this tank for the second iter uh, iteration, but alright, so you can pause the video if you want to take a quick look. But here are the main stats for this tank. Now this is going to be a premium tier 8 tank, so it's going to cost a lot of gold around 11,000 or so, so pretty pricey. Now it may get the Super Pershing treatment to be around 7,000, but I don't know. It's probably around 11,000. Alright. Hit points wise is 1,420, 
very chunky for a medium tank. Think of it this way, the IS-3 has 1,500, so yeah, it's pretty chunky of a health, like all freaking Japanese tanks because they have no armor, so they need a lot of health to absorb the shocks. Uh, quite alright. Engine power is 500 horsepower. Power to weight ratio is 14.71 with a ton of 34 tons. So it's not bad power to weight ratio. It's not good. Uh, think about it this way. Uh, the T-32 American Tier 8 heavy tank has 14 power to weight ratio. So yeah, it's not that good. It's kind of sluggish. Ugh. Top speed is 45 kilometers per hour. Reverse is 20. Reverse is pretty fast, 20. So it can go backwards pretty fast, but forward speed is kind of slow. Hull traverse is 44 degrees per second. Decent. It's not as quick as 55-ish like some Russian tanks, but all right. Terrain resistance is kind of bad in my opinion, 0.9 for hard, 1.05 for medium, and 1.9 for soft. So this is borderline heavy tank stats or even tank destroyer, heavy tank destroyer like the Yak Tiger or Ferdinand. So yeah, this is kind of bad. Hull armor is 45mm at the front, 35 at the sides, and possibly 20mm at the rear. Turret armor is 70 millimeters in the front, 60 at the sides, 35 possibly at the rear. So this tank has no armor. Blah. Disgusting. <laughs> gun is a 90 millimeter gun, like all Type 61 tanks carry. Damage is 240. All right. Penetration is 186. So kind of bad, but it's not as bad as the T44 or something or rather. But all right, it's still bad it's not amazing like the centurion so it's uh it's a medium tank so uh, quite all right i guess dpm is 2115 about the same for all tier 8 uh, medium tanks so quite all right you can jump this up to 2400 with a gun rammer and vents but all right rate of fire is 8.8 .8 rounds per minute accuracy is 3.5 0 0.3.5 what 0.355 <laughs> I can't talk anymore. 0 0.355. Ah, so basically, it's decent accuracy, very good accuracy. Aim time is 2.11 seconds, which is okay. Gun depression is very good, like all Japanese tank. 10 degrees of gun depression. Turret traverse is 43.8 degrees per second. So, uh, it's decent. So this thing is slow to flank, very slow to flank. So don't flank with this, but you can still circle strafe super heavy tanks like. I don't know, the Ferdinand or the Tiger types, so or the KV series, like the KV-4 or uh, even the STI, but just be careful, you have no armor whatsoever. View range is okay, 380 meters, it's not as good as the Centurion or the Pershing, so yeah, you're about 30, um, 30 meters away from awesomeness, but alright, decent. Radio range is standard, so alright. So basically, this tank is... Average. Average at best. Meh. And here's the main comparison between the STA-1 and the STA-2. Now, the STA-1 has more health, but the STA-1 is kind of bigger, in my opinion, because the hull armor is longer with more road wheels. So, trades off, I guess, but alright. Now, let's look at the power to weight ratio. The STA-1 has a better engine, 550 horsepower, in comparison to 500 horsepower. Also, the STA-1 weighs about pretty much the same, so power to weight ratio on the STA-1 is actually better. So alright, so 16.73 in comparison to 14.71, so quite alright. Top speed is same, as well as reverse, so both tanks are pretty nimble. However, the STA-2 has better terrain resistance in comparison to soft terrain. So only on the soft terrain, but both tanks have crappy terrain resistance in comparison to normal medium tanks at tier 8. So yeah, these two tanks are sluggish in swampy lands. So ugh. Ugh. Alright, let's look at the other stuff. Hull armor wise, the STA-1 has 45 at the front, the same. So turret front is... 70-ish. So yeah, hull armor is pretty much the same. 60 at the sides for the turret, 35 at the sides for the uh, hull armor, 20 at the end, 20 at the ass. They didn't give us the rear armor on the STA-2, so I'm guessing it's about 20. 
pretty much the same. And 35 is what I guess on the back of the turret. But both tank has no armor unless you hit the mantlet. But eh, he still can penetrate the mantlet with a very high caliber shot. So don't depend on the mantlet. But all right, let's look at the guns. Now it is the same 90 millimeter gun, I presume. So the damage is pretty much the same. However, the penetration is way better on the STA-1. It's almost centurion like so. Yep, the penetration is way better. I didn't know it has almost 220 millimeters penetration. Jesus, this is crazy. Yeah, it has 40 less millimeters of, or at least 35 millimeters of less penetration. So yeah, that's kind of suck on the penetration part. DPM, however, is a little bit better with a faster firing gun. So rate of fire is actually faster on the STA-2, but you need to penetrate, obviously, or else you deal zero damage. <laughs> oh crap. All right, let's look at the accuracy. It is more accurate on the STA-1, so, uh-oh, that's gotta suck. Aim time is worse on the STA-1, so it's a bit of trade-off, I guess. Gun depression is both good, 10 degrees of gun depression. Now, what sucks about the STA-1 is that it has no gun elevation, only 13 degrees, so this sucks. But I don't know the elevation of the STA-2, so that's still a hidden stat somewhere. All right. Uh, turret Traverse is 38, uh, 48.8, which is the same. Hull Traverse is the same. So basically it is like a stock STA-1, but with less penetrating gun, but a smaller armor. So a smaller hull armor. So the trade-off, let's look at the view range. It has 10 less meters of view range. That's gonna suck. And 30 less meters of radio range, but radio range at this level, anything above 700 is decent. So, yeah, it has less view range, less hull armor, or smaller hull armor. Uh, gun is not as penetrating as the 90 millimeter top gun. So it is like the second 90 millimeter. So like this second 90 millimeter. Now, if you're gonna compare the second 90 millimeter, you have way better stats on the STA-2, but yeah, the accuracy is the same. So basically it's like playing the second gun on the STA-1. So quite all right, but eh, final opinion about this STA-2, it's pretty much the same as the STA-1 with less penetration. So Joe average, meh. So in the final opinion about the STA-2, it feels a lot like a Type 61 with a second gun, second 90mm gun on the STA-1 at Tier 8. It has no armor, it sloshes through swamp pretty slowly, so it's pretty bad um, terrain resistance. Top speed is okay, reverse speed is very good. About gun elevation, it probably has pretty crappy gun elevation, about 13 degrees, so yeah. Gun depression, however, is very decent, 10 degrees. Um, gun doesn't penetrate though, it has no penetration. DPM is pretty much the same as STA-1. So unless you really like the Japanese medium tank line, and you want something to make credits as well as train your crew in, nah, go for it. But if it's gonna cost the same amount of gold as a tier 8 heavy tank, I would just recommend you buy the heavy tank. Because heavy tank are heavy tank. I mean, the T-34 can make a lot of money because the gun has the same penetration as the same tier tank destroyer, even though it just fires a little bit slower. As well as the IS-6, that thing has crazy slope armor. So as for this tank, it has no armor, gun doesn't penetrate, kind of sloshes through stuff. Uh, I mean, if it has the same gun on the STA-1, the 220mm penetrating gun, I would think about getting it. I mean, it's decent if you like Japanese crew, but in the end, the gun is not that good. Like all premium tanks, as well as the hull armor is not good and it sloshes. So, it's mediocre tank. Buy it if you really want it, or if you really like Japanese tanks. But in my opinion, skip it. Or get it when it's... um mission based or special reward or something like that but all right well thank you guys for watching this video and um hopefully you guys enjoyed it but comment below what you think about the sta2 so in my opinion meh but okay so 
rate this video will also help me out as well as subscribe to my channel for more leak info regarding to water tanks as well as my tank reviews and gameplay tips and other stuff regarding to water tanks bunch of mumbo jumbo and other stuff but i kind of have a cold going on so i don't feel pretty well and my nose is kind of stuffed up so i might sound weird in the videos i don't know yet but whatever but thank you guys for watching this video hopefully you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys next time peace